Hey commissioning team, welcome to commissioning and startup.com. My name is Paul Turner and I will help you survive and thrive in your commissioning career. In this three day mini course, I will send you three modules. Module one, prior to on-site commissioning. Module two, on-site commissioning. And module three, startup and operational readiness. Before we get started, please pause this video and be sure to download the workbook resource below. Print out the workbook as you will want to pause this video and take notes as we move through the information. Let's get started with Module 1. In Section 1, we'll cover planning during design and construction phases. In Section 2, we'll cover procurement and factory acceptance testing. And in Section 3, we'll cover mechanical completion. We'll then review some of the Module 1 downloads that are available to you. An important part of planning is the commissioning schedule. It defines all of the construction prerequisites and when they are required to fit into the activity sequence. You will need to work closely with all project stakeholders to determine when activities need to be completed in order to feed into the overall commissioning plan. There are several resources that make up the commissioning team. In addition to the commissioning manager who leads the overall commissioning program, there are key discipline leads such as electrical leads or mechanical leads or automation leads that lead specific areas of the commissioning program. The consultant subject matter experts will be involved to oversee commissioning and startup of the plant processes. Contractors, vendor representatives and owner representatives will also form part of the commissioning team. An important group you will want to make sure is part of the commissioning team is the operating staff. They are the group that will continue operating and maintaining the new plant processes and have the most vested interest in the successful commissioning and startup of the new plant. And most important of all, make sure that you define the roles and responsibilities of each team member. Everybody needs to have a clear expectation of what is required of them and the role that they play on the project so that there is no overlap in expectations and that all roles are fulfilled. See the download below for a sample of roles and responsibilities. Now let's move on to documentation. There's always lots of documentation required on a project and let's go through each component. Test plans, test procedures, and the processes to manage commissioning are written in advance to define how the project will be managed and the tests required to be done on each piece of equipment. An updated and accurate set of drawings must be available to the commissioning team to document the as-built condition of the equipment in the field. Commissioning checklists are prepared in advance to make sure that everything gets commissioned per specification. Now let's cover deficiency tracking. When a deficiency or defect is identified in the field, it is classified as either a Type A, Type B, or Type C deficiency. A Type A deficiency is a showstopper, affecting technical functionality or safety of the system and must be addressed before moving on to the next step of commissioning. A Type B deficiency does not immediately impact commissioning but must be rectified before handover to the owner. And a type C deficiency is a minor defect not impacting functionality of the system that is agreed to be completed after handover to the owner. All deficiencies get added to the deficiency tracking sheet where they are categorized and then rectified per specification. Be sure to download the deficiency tracking and classification resources at the links below. The contractor is required to provide several document deliverables per specification. O&M manuals are required for contractor supplied equipment and these will be used by the operations staff for continued operations and maintenance of the new equipment. The contractor is often required to train the operations staff on the new equipment and this is defined in a training lessons plan provided by the contractor. The contractor must provide an accurate set of as-built drawings defining exactly what was installed in the field. Some forms of commissioning are fairly detailed and specific and may require special tools for commissioning the equipment in the field. Often these tools have a long procurement time and must be planned for and purchased well in advance of the commissioning team mobilizing to site. Don't forget about test reporting. All the results that have been gathered must be put into a report to demonstrate that the equipment meets specification requirements. Everyone will want to know the progress during commissioning and you must prepare progress reports so that all stakeholders are aware of how commissioning is going. And last but not least, you must define the safety management plan that will be used during commissioning. Energy isolation procedures or lockout tagout procedures 
must be defined in advance for all electrical and mechanical systems in order that all equipment is safely isolated for ongoing construction and commissioning activities. Formal roles and responsibilities should be defined in order to know who is accountable and responsible for safety management on site. We'll now move on to Section 2 covering procurement and factory acceptance testing. Prior to procurement during the design phase, a detailed specification is prepared defining all the technical requirements of the project, including the factory acceptance test requirements. Factory acceptance testing is the off-site testing done during the procurement phase in the factory to verify that the software and hardware are designed correctly and meet the specification requirements. This greatly reduces project risk by addressing errors earlier in the project prior to equipment arriving at site. Any errors identified in the factory are much cheaper and easier to address in the factory than waiting to identify and fix errors on site. All major equipment will undergo factory acceptance testing, such as large electrical apparatus, equipment with specific dielectric requirements, and all process specific equipment. Software is an important part of factory acceptance testing to verify that the automation or the logic and code is programmed correctly per specification. Software should be uploaded to the hardware and integrated factory acceptance testing conducted to ensure that the hardware and the software function correctly per specification. Any errors found at this stage of the project before the hardware leaves the factory greatly reduce the risk of the project and on-site commissioning. Let's move on to Section 3 and cover mechanical completion. Mechanical completion signifies the completion of construction and installation and is the point in time where the construction team hands over the new systems to the commissioning team to start testing the new systems. At mechanical completion, the construction team is responsible to hand over an accurate set of red line drawings to the commissioning team. Drawings are marked up to indicate any as-left conditions in the field. Drawing markups are typically indicated in red, green, and blue. Any red markups indicate additions, any green markups indicate deletions, and any blue markups indicate additional comments. At mechanical completion, the construction and commissioning teams will jointly walk the systems to verify that installed equipment matches P&ID drawings. Verification of P&ID drawings will verify that all piping is installed for the drawing, all valves are installed, and any pressure gauges are correctly in place. As well, all electrical checks are completed, which typically includes measuring cables to confirm insulation properties, and point-to-point -point wiring checks to confirm that wiring is installed correctly and is the correct polarity. Any mechanical or electrical deficiencies that are noted at mechanical completion are added to the deficiency list or punch list and categorized as Type A, Type B, or Type C. All Type A deficiencies must be rectified before moving on to the next stage of commissioning. Please be sure to check out the Module 1 downloads at the links below. The Commissioning Dictionary includes definitions and acronyms of all the terminology used in this course. There is a sample roles and responsibilities that you can use to define the roles on your project. You can use the Deficiency Classification download to help define the deficiencies on your project. And use the template for the Deficiency Tracking Log to track your deficiencies. I have also included a weekly meeting plan and a meeting minute template so that you can structure the meetings required for your project. Hey commissioning team, I hope you found module one helpful, where we covered the off-site activities prior to the commissioning team mobilizing to site. In module two tomorrow, we mobilize to site and start the pre-commissioning and commissioning activities. This is where things start to get really interesting as we start working with the new systems hands-on. In the meantime, please check out the module one downloads below. If you have any questions, please let me know. I want to help you survive and thrive in your commissioning career. Have a great day and please watch for module two email tomorrow.